My name is Alice Buskin. I'm the Early Childhood Intervention Coordinator with Texas Care. Um, today I'm going to be addressing some of the significant bills related to infant and maternal health. Just to clarify for this section, um, if there's an and separating bills, that means that they may have an identical caption but don't necessarily have identical content um, but are similar, whereas the flash would indicate a companion bill. Um, there are a number of bills that are related to infant health this session. Um, two bills uh, are related to improving the ability of mothers to breastfeed. HB 741 focuses on public employees, while HB 1706 fortifies current laws authorizing women to breastfeed. Um, HB 740, HB 392, and SB 253 all relate to newborn screenings for congenital heart defects. HB 740, which is currently pending in committee, um, would authorize newborn screening tests for congenital heart defects in healthcare facilities that provide newborn care. Um, next slide, please. Um, there are also a couple of issues related to early childhood intervention, um, most of which, or many of which involve the budget. Last session, ECI was cut by about 14%. Um, the department did not ask to restore all that funding, but they did ask the legislature to um, account for caseload growth as well as recognize that uh, the pool that ECI is serving, those kids have more complex needs. Um, the exceptional item they requested has been approved on both sides, um, meaning that uh, that would allow them to maintain funding for the average monthly cost per child which has increased as a result of uh, serving kids with more complex needs. HB 1098 and SB 1060 um, would require the department to uh, conduct a study on the cost effectiveness of family cost share provisions, as well as implement changes that are proven to be more cost effective. Um, the committee substitute on the Senate side now includes language that would allow the department not to implement changes if they would prove cost prohibitive for families. Next slide, please. There are also a couple of bills related to um, environmental protections for young kids. HB 218 would prohibit the manufacture and sale of uh, certain children's products with bisphenol A. And SB 86 would implement a statewide smoking ban in all indoor and outdoor workplaces. Next slide. Um, there are also uh, several bills related to maternal health. SB 495 and HB 1085 would uh, create a multidisciplinary task force that would study the uh, would study pregnancy-related medical complications and maternal mortality. Uh, HB 1605 by Davis would um, establish a pregnancy medical home pilot program in Harris County to provide coordinated maternity care for women, um, with the ultimate goal of reducing poor birth outcomes. HB 15 would uh, create levels of care designations for hospitals that provide neonatal and maternal services. Um, there are quite a few issues related to uh, preventive health care for women. Um, you know, we recognize that promoting infant health begins before birth with proper prenatal care for pregnant women and ongoing attention to maternal health. Uh, many of these issues are related to the budget. There are three primary strategies that deal with family planning. Um, DISHES B.1.3 is the family planning services strategy. That strategy was the one that was cut by two-thirds last session. Um, that funding has not been returned this session. It's being level funded. Um, and, it, it, uh, and last session was also when there was a new tiered funding system for how that funding was distributed. Um, however, there's been uh, $100 million approved on both the House and Senate side for the primary health care, uh, sorry, the community primary care services strategy. Um, and that money would be used for uh, women's health services. And finally, HHSC D.2.3 is the Texas Women's Health Program. Last session, Senate Bill 7 banned abortion providers and affiliates from participating in the Women's Health Program. As a result, the federal government uh, withdrew its 90% Medicaid match. Um, that strategy is still being funded at the same level, but all of that funding will now be coming from the state. Um, there are also a number of writers, uh, proposed writers, that are related to family planning and women's health care. Uh, many of them involve um, who can provide services. Uh, they're writers that would prevent various family planning strategies from funding contractors who provide abortions. Um, they're also a writer that um, expands on the tiered system within the family planning strategy, and uh, a writer that would specify that entities wouldn't be disqualified from family planning funding if they are affiliated with abortion providers as long as they meet certain criteria such as legal separation. Um, there are also uh, writers uh, requiring greater reporting on the enrollment and capacity of the Texas Women's Health Program. Um, there are writers related to uh, requiring parental consent for prescription drugs administered to minors. Um, there was originally a writer, uh, several writers, two writers in the House that would um, require providers in uh, the primary health care program and the Texas Women's Health Program to provide FDA-approved birth control, um, but that writer has uh, uh, will not make it into the budget. Um, and uh, there's also a writer that if um, HHSC should cease operations with Texas Women's Health Services under D.2.3. Any unexpended GR would be transferred to the Community Primary Care Services uh, strategy. Um, next slide, 
Um, there are also a number of independent bills related to preventive health care for women, um, many of which overlap with some of the issues discussed before. HB 755 by Davis would require a study on the effects on unintended pregnancy of last session, Senate Bill 7, um, including the restructured system of family planning services. HB 1708 by Farrar and SB 1709 by Davis would require a study on the capacity of the Texas Women's Health Program to serve women. HB 1709 would uh, ensure that if HHSC were to stop operating the Texas Women's Health Program, the department would immediately, immediately apply for federal funds to establish a program identical to the Medicaid Women's Health Program. SB 1675 by Davis and HB 2819 by Thompson would establish a demonstration project through the medical assistance program to expand access to preventative health and family planning services. HB 1057 and SB 521 um, would require parental approval uh, when children participate in school-sponsored sex education programs that are administered by someone other than the uh, other than the uh, district. Um, the bill would also prevent those bills would also prevent groups that. Um, provide or affiliated with abortion providers from uh, providing that uh, programming or any materials for it. SB 310 by Ellis and HB 3581 by Strama also deal with um, health education curriculum and sex education. Um, they include a number of elements uh, and additions to the programs, including uh, more evidence-based curriculum and materials that, are age uh, materials that provide age-appropriate information about pregnancy and uh, uh, disease prevention. And finally, there are a number of bills related to immunization. Uh, SB 63 would allow minors with children to consent to their own immunization. SB 64 and HB 1150 would require licensed child care facilities to develop and implement policies um, that would protect children from vaccine-preventable diseases. Uh, HB 1340 would allow minors 14 years of age or older to consent to their own immunization. And SB 40, uh, HB 772, and HB 771 all deal with um, retaining information on children's vaccinations within the immunization registry.